Hi everybody and welcome to today's lesson where we're going to be creating a floral painting together. So I've got everything I need, I've got my reference photo, I've got my swatch list, my colour wheel and all the supplies that I need to do my painting. I'm going to be using the Aspen range of Princeton brushes which are quite a medium to hard bristle brush. I'm also going to be using a disposable palette for the sake of this tutorial um, but feel free to use whatever you've got lying around and in this little glass I've got some low odour thinner. So to begin you just want to dab your brush in the thinner and just take off the excess on a little paper towel and I've chosen a size 4 bright brush um, for the sketch and you can use whatever colour you want to sketch in. I've used a mix of the Rose Madder and Hooker's Green um, just to take the tone down so it's quite a greyish colour. And I'm sketching out the basics of the rose. This is a very conceptual stage and it doesn't have to be exact but if you want to do it exact that's absolutely fine. It's whatever you prefer and feel free to take as long as you need on this stage. And don't feel like it has to look exactly like the reference photo. The point of a reference photo is to guide you in creating a more realistic painting and to paint what you see and not what you think a rose might look like. Um, but don't worry too much if the leaves maybe aren't in exactly the right place or you know this is just used as a guide. And don't forget about the tip we discussed in the first lesson and that is if you want to erase a line that you've done in this part of the sketch, just take some thinner and use your brush to wipe that away and then you can just go straight back over it again. So you can add quite a lot of thinner to this paint mixture as you're sketching because this will make it almost seem uh, watery in terms of a better word and it'll be easy to work with and it will also keep the layer nice and thin so that it will dry really fast. So generally with oils we work from dark to light so we start blocking in the dark areas first. So I'm going to use a paint mixture of Rose Madder, Payne's Grey and Hooker's Green to make a really deep dark red. And again, I'm still going to use quite a lot of thinner in this mixture so that it's easy um, to spread along the canvas and it will dry quite quickly as well. So just looking at my reference photo and then back to my painting and back at my reference photo, I'm just going to go along the surface of the canvas blocking in those dark areas that I can see. Very often when we look at a reference photo, our eye will take in all those little details and actually that can be really distracting and it's not very helpful to the painting. So if you squint at a reference, you will ignore all those details and get those main blocks of painting in. For the leaves, I'm actually going to be using the same mixture but more Hooker's Green in that. So it's still got some of that red in it to, to bring that saturation down and make it darker. So once we've blocked in those main dark areas, um, we're going to go on to the next stage and that's going to add in a little bit more brightness which is exciting. So dip your paintbrush in the thinner repeatedly and take off the excess paint on a paper towel till it sort of runs clear. And we're going to work on the main body of the rose now. So taking some of the rose madder and a little bit of the thinner, I'm going to start blocking in some of those other areas. This is going to be our medium sort of range and I'm also going to make sure that I try and cover the rest of the white areas now and it's fine to sort of like blend it into those darker bits that we've already put down as well. This stage sort of feels a bit like colouring in but I'm still looking at my reference photo and trying to get those shapes blocked in as well.
So now our lean layer, our thin layer, our bottom layer is all completely down. So now we can start to go in with some fatter layers and I'm gonna be using paint mostly out of the tube to sort of work into the painting now. I really like to work in an alla prima way, which is doing a painting in one sitting. And that's what I'm gonna be doing today. So now we can go in with some vermilion and we're gonna be putting in the really vibrant parts of the painting. So you'll see in the reference photo, there's some of those really vibrant, vivid, fully saturated colors. And that's what I'm gonna be going in with the vermilion. Obviously it's such a strong, vivid, beautiful color. And that's gonna really give life to the rose. So again, it's just a case of looking at the reference photo and back at the painting and just working in those areas that you can see. And don't be scared to go over bits that you've already painted as well and work into that. It's kind of a case of refinement when you're oil painting. So going over areas again and maybe changing little bits here and there and eventually you get to a painting that you're really happy with. And as I'm working on this, I can sort of feel like there's an area that needs a lot more darkness. So I'm going to go in with my Rose Madder and Hooker's Green mixture and start to add in these darker areas again. And to blend that through into what we've just been creating. And to refine that, I'm just going to take some more of the Vermilion and just work that into those darker areas to blend, which is a really interesting point about oils actually. Very often with acrylics um, and watercolors, you might hear that you need a completely clean brush to blend. Whereas actually with oil paints, I really enjoy blending with a color and blending those colors together with a lot of paint on my paintbrush. So I've cleaned my brush out really well and next we're going to go on to some highlights. So using the vermilion with a little bit of white, we're not going to take this too far because as you can see from the reference photo, there's not a lot of white areas. But I just want to add in a few little highlights that have almost like caught the light and I think this contrast between the light and the darks is what really brings magic to a painting. If you can have from the darkest darks to the lightest lights, that's a really nice contrast to have. And so, as I say, I'm not gonna add too much. There's just some little hints, just on the edges of the petals that I'm gonna add, and I'm probably gonna leave it there. So clean your brush out and try and get all that white out of the brush. You can also use separate brushes for darks and lights if that's a bit easier for you. Um, I'm gonna take some Payne's Gray and Rose Madder next and work in some of those darker areas again. As you work through the painting, you can kind of feel like those bits disappear that you put down. So it's nice to just work those in again if you feel like they've disappeared. And also because I'm using a bit more Payne's Grey than before, I'm just making sure that those really dark areas are really dark, almost black, and you can use black if you want to, but I think a Payne's Grey is a really nice uh, way to add in darks without it being too harsh. So I'm gonna wash out my brush really well so I've got all that paint's gray out. And I'm almost going through the steps again just to reinforce those colors, but I'm taking some of the Rose Madder now um, straight from the palette and adding some really thicker areas of paint. So these are like nice thick brush strokes. So now it's a case of refinement. I'm going backwards and forwards between all the colors that we've used and feeling like it needs to have some of those details in that maybe we didn't add in before. So just looking at my reference photo and then back to my painting, I'm gonna try and finish it off between all these colors that we've been using. And take as long as you need to for this refinement part because at this point all our paintings will look slightly different and whenever you're ready we'll work on the foliage next. So this is where your colour wheel will come in handy. I'm going to mix a few different greens that we can use. Um, using Hooker's Green and a bit of Cobalt Blue with white is our bluey green and then Vermilion 
with some hookers green and white is going to be our like less saturated green that we're going to be using as well. So using this mid green, so it's not a dark, it's also not the light, but it's like a mid green. I'm going to start blocking in those areas, again looking at the reference photo, then back at my painting, and blocking in those main areas of the leaves. And once I've got those main areas blocked in, I'm going to go back over that with some white. So in that same colour, I'm just going to add in some white, a bit more green to make it a bit more you know, greeny coloured, and uh, add in some of those lighter areas. So you can see in the photo where the light is just bouncing off of those leaves, um, I'm going to add those little nuggets of light areas in. I'm also keeping my brush strokes um, quite impressionistic. So if you prefer the more blended look, the more detailed, realistic look, then feel free to spend a bit more time and blend those brush strokes out. I really like to see um, a brush stroke and I like the, the painterly feel. So now I'm going to add in some more of those bluey tones, which we created with Hooker's Green and Cobalt Blue and White. I like adding all the different sort of colours into a colour because I feel like with the light and the shadow, it creates these gorgeous hues. So I'm adding in this blue colour and next I really want to go in with more of a lime greeny, yellow green colour as well. So I'm going to take some Hooker's Green and Cadmium Yellow and you can see that is just so vibrant and this is what really brings a painting to life. And I'm not going to go too far with this colour, I'm just going to add little hints here and there um, to really bring that vividness back into the leaves. And just like we did with the flower head, I want to go in with some highlights, so adding some white to that, we're just going to add in some of those really lovely highlights that you can see in the reference photo. Again, feel free to take your own artistic license with this as well, you don't have to fully um, copy the reference photo, as you can see that I haven't. And this is where you can really follow your instinct as an artist and follow your own uh, voice, is where you add these little hints of darks and lights and the way you use your brush. If you are using the same brush, just make sure that you wash it out really, really well if you've been using white because it contaminates colours very heavily. I feel like I've lost some of those darks, so I'm going to get some Hooker's Green and Rose Madder and bring some of those darker areas back in again and blend them through. And I'm going to wash my brush out really well because I think that is the leaves finished for now. So moving on to the background, I'm going to use a size 10 brush with a stiff bristle brush here. And this is totally up to you what you want to do the background like. I'm using a mixture of vermilion, a bit of yellow to create a lovely peach colour. Um, but you can use whatever colour you want, you can go straight in with the white, you could do a pale pink, a pale green. This is totally up to you and I'd really love to hear about what colour you choose for the background. I'm sort of taking inspiration from the reference photo with those peachy hues and I'm going to work that throughout the whole background. This is one of my favourite moments because I really love working into the painting of what we've already done. So I love that sort of blend between the background and the foreground and almost like merging them together and seeing those beautiful blends. And this is why I absolutely love oil paints because with acrylics, those other layers would be completely dry now and you wouldn't be able to manoeuvre the paint in this way. Whereas with oil paints it's still totally wet so you can get those lovely blends and you can really refine the shape of the object that you're working with. And I think this is one of the most magical things about oils. And to refine the shape you can play around with the foreground and the background together and sort of like erase and delete, erase and delete till you find something that you're happy with because as I said I really like seeing those brush strokes and seeing how that merges together and this is why I like using a big brush for this stage because it kind of um, takes a bit of the control away from you and 
these little happy accidents can seem to happen and then you can choose which accidents to keep or which ones to delete. <laughs> And you can use quite a lot of thinner in this paint mixture as well because obviously it's the first layer that is going down on a lot of the canvas. Um, so feel free to use how much thinner you like. Um, I've used a bit of thinner to help the paint become more viscous but I'm also using thicker paint in areas as well because I think that'll be nice to see that texture in the brush strokes. And as you can see, I'm sort of just playing around with the big brush for the background and the smaller brush for the foreground and just really refining the shape of the rose. And again, I'm looking at the reference photo for this as well and seeing if I'm getting those edges right with the petals. And now I'm just going to do exactly the same thing, working around the leaves. And um, it's important to try and remember about those little grooves, uh, the serrated edges around the leaf's edge as well. So once the whole of the background is in, I'm going to go over some of those uh, bits of the foliage again because as you can see it's erased some of those bits a little bit too much, uh, like the stalk and some of the leaves. Um, so I'm just going to wash my brush out because I think I'm done with that brush now. Um, and taking my smaller brush, I'm just going to start to work in some of those details again. So using a dark mixture of the Vermilion, Hooker's Green and Payne's Grey, I'm going to take in some of those darks with the stalk and it can be difficult working uh, with a lighter background because white tends to take over the darks and um, so you might have to use the paint a little bit more thicker than you might have done before. And for the final stage of the painting, I'm going to look at the painting as a whole and how it works together and looking at my reference photo and is there anything I've missed um, and just reworking some of those little areas that don't quite sit right with me. At this point, this stage will be completely different for each and every one of us because our paintings will be so different um, that it's in the minute details. And so this is where, again, you can follow your gut, follow your instinct as an artist and work your painting. You don't want to overwork it, you don't want it to be perfection, but keep stepping back, keep taking some breaths and, and try and create a painting that uh, sits well with you and that doesn't have parts that annoy you. <laughs> That's how I know when my painting is finished, is when it stops annoying me. <laughs> And so I'm just like working the shape of this petal and this, I just feel like there's something not right about it so I'm just going to keep working over it. And also I realise I haven't brought the stalk right up to the bottom of the rose so I'm just going to do that now. So although this stage will be different for all of us, hopefully it's helpful to give you a little bit of a rundown of what I'm doing and like my sort of process at this point. I'm 
I'm just going to soften this edge a little bit because I feel like it's a little bit of a hard edge that draws your attention a bit too much. So I'm just going to soften that in with the background. Uh, but other than that, I kind of feel like it's done. I feel like I'm finished. So I really enjoyed painting with you today. I hope that you enjoyed it too and that you found some of those little tips helpful. I would absolutely love to see your paintings in the gallery. So please make sure to upload your versions. And it was great to see them all. And let me know in the comments how you got on with it as well. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I'll see you in the next lesson where we're going to be discussing water mixable oils.